All right, let me do this. Let's break. Okay. We'll come back. The second we come back, we'll start the character contest. It's going to be Eastside Dave versus Fez Watley, mano a mano, Ron Fez show. It's a character showdown. Jets versus uh, Sharks here. It's going to be uh, Dave versus uh, Fez. Here's how we're doing it. It's a judgment of five. I'm using the guys on the show, myself, and two uh, secret listeners. Okay. We're going to email me at ronandfez at AOL.com. Right. You won't know who voted which way. Okay, that'll be the panel. Mm-hmm. Um, as we start this, it will be the flip of a coin. See who goes first. Okay. I won't get to give one. Fez, I want you to call heads or tails. Tails. All right. You get tails. That means you get to call whether you want heads or tails. No. <laughs> tails means that you win it, Fezzy. You have the decision now. Uh -huh. Do you want to start this or be the second person? I will go second. Whoa. Yeah. I'm going to defer. Shocking. All right, and what... Uh, I believe in my defense. And what goal will you be defending? Uh, the north end. Okay. He points uh, to, I would say, northeast, as he said northeast, north end. So I'm, I'm proud <laughs> of him there. Um, all right, Davey Mack. Okay, it's fair. Is this what we're leaving on as the background music? <laughs> Seeker? I don't know what we're doing. Um, <clears throat> the production meeting starting tomorrow. All right. As we start off, Dave will be going first with... Shits Nolte. This is Shits Nolte, and boy, do I have a case of the shits. God damn it. <clears throat> Let me start off. Let me start off by telling you something. You can get through life half-assed, but you cannot win half-assed. Speaking of asses, some shit just fell out of mine. God damn it. What I'm saying is, it's art. You gotta give it up. You were never really an artist in the first place. Maybe a fartist, not an artist. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really must fart out some shit. God damn it. I'm getting too old for this shit, literally. My ass is about 65, but my shit's only 10 days old. White Rabbit! How many players did you buy this week, Happy? Huh? And then couldn't you spend that money on a porta potty? I got the shits, Wallace and Gromit. We're gonna get up that hill, boys! Yeah, we're gonna get up that hill. And then we'll get some water. But not till we get up that hill. Not till I shit out this army food I've been eating. Good God, these shit smell like canteens and Jeff's. Dick Cabot! Just do what you have to, Happy. I don't wanna know about it unless it is actually shit. Then I do wanna know about it. Exiting my anus, Lyle love it. I'm shit stumpy, I gotta go. God damn it! Long first when it was Dave's first. Mm -hmm. Shits Nolte. Under a minute? Yeah. But let's in introduce uh, Shits Nolte into the blind side mom, Leanne Tully. Leanne Tully. Hey there, I'm Leanne Tully. And I'm the mom from Blind Side. Now, what I do is I adopt big, dumb black kids and turn them into football players. It's what I do. And I don't change those boys' lives. They change mine. Now, let me ask you boys. Do you have a place to sleep tonight? Don't you dare lie to me. Come on. You're all coming home with me. Then first thing tomorrow, I'm going to take over the football practice and teach every last one of you how to block. Because when you think of that quarterback, you think of me. Even though I've never played quarterback, and even though he's a boy and I'm a southern woman in a push-up bra, you still think of me, Leanne Tui, the mom from Blindside. And let me tell you all, you threaten my son, you threaten me. I'm just a mom raising a daughter, a son, and a developmentally challenged offensive lineman. I will still come back here and kill every one of you stereotypical black gang members because I'm not changing that boy's life. He's changing mine. Because you know what? That big dumb right tackle with the GPA of a grape, he's never had one before. And I know what you're thinking. A bedroom of his own? No. A bed. And I'm not changing that bed. It's changing me. All right, now, me and my husband, we got to drive around and look for more freezing black kids to bring home. Y'all take care now, you hear? 
Wow, these are long characters. Long characters. <laughs> that was Shit's Nolte versus the blind side mom. Leanne Tui, was it? Tui. Tui. Leanne Tui. <laughs> wow. Long wind. From outside of Memphis, I think. All right, now it's time to meet Dave's second character, It's Faddles. Hi, I'm Faddles. I'm so fucking fat. Cheeseburger. Yesterday I ate so many che Cheetos that I puked and then scooped up the puke with Tostitos. That's fat. Cheeseburger. The thing I hate about trees are they aren't made of steaks. Really fat. Cheeseburger. I wish cars were just giant Twinkies with wheels so we could ride in them and eat them at the same time. Did I mention I was fat? Cheeseburger. I was having sex with my girlfriend. When I shot my jizz on her back, I sopped it up with some bread. I'm fucking fat. Cheeseburger. My dog passed away, so I buried it in the backyard and ate my shit to grieve. That's fat. Cheeseburger. I wish that Twins catcher Joe Nathan was actually a human hot dog, so I'd let him slide into my mouth. I'm really fucking fat. I wish instead of polio, you got a disease called polio that turns you into cheese strips. I'd hope to get sick in that case so I could eat myself. That's quite fat. I'm fat. I gotta go. I'm hungry now. Extremely fat. All right, that was Faddles. He's got a weight problem. But um, now let's meet a uh, former NFL coach, Tony Dungy. Tony Dungy here checking some news around the NFL. The Colts and Saints are undefeated. We could end up having a Super Bowl with two undefeated teams. That's really something to shout about. I really think Peyton Manning's the best quarterback in the league. He got kind of a large head, but I think that helps him out on the field. I'll always root for him as loud as I can. There's trouble in New England. I don't think Tom Brady's getting all the help he can from his team. I'm sorry. Am I getting too loud? Sometimes this stuff just riles me up. Some people are questioning the coaching in New England. You know, I've always had my own coaching style, which was basically just a combination of nodding, blinking, and everyday sign language. Dallas is continuing having trouble in December. If I was their coach, I'd really be letting them have it. I would be screaming as loud as I could. And if anyone could hear me, they'd really get the message. Well, that's it for me. I'm about to lose my voice from all this shouting. I'm Tony Dungy reporting for the NFL. All right, that was Faddles meeting Tony Dungy. Now let's go over to, uh, well, you love him every night on NBC. It's Dave Leno. Hey, everybody, I'm Dave Leno. This is Headlines. Yeah, okay, then now the first headline is an extra sketch picture I made that shows me sucking George Foreman's dick. It's like, whoa, right, guys? It's like, you know, what kind of toy is that? Right, Truman? It's like, you know, down goes Leno, down goes Leno. I'm George's big uncircumcised penis, right? Oh, it's... Here's a headline I found interesting. It's a bowl of spaghetti oath where I spelled out in the soup the phrase semen in my ass. It's like, hold on, right, man? It's like, what kind of sick food is that, right, boy? It's like, uh, maybe I do want semen in my ass, but I sure as heck don't want my dinner to know about it, right, dude? You know? I wish I could fuck Shannon Sharp. This next headline is a picture of me masturbating in the theater while watching Lord of the Rings. It's like, whoa, hey, hold on, hey, man, what kind of movie is this, right, guys? You know? It's like, those hobbits are so cute and fuckable, right, guys? It's like, you know, they're so tiny, you could fuck about, like, eight hobbits and not even get tired, right, boy? You know? Hey, this headline is simply a Peter North mask that I wear my wife wear, uh, that I make my wife wear when I'm at home. It's like, hold the phone, right, man? You know, it's like, now all my wife needs is a 10-inch cock and a breath reduction, and we'll be on easy street, right, right, guys? You know, it's like, I wish I could go back in time and fuck my grade school gym teacher, Mr. Brickson, right, boy? You know, I wish daniel son and Mr. Miyagi fucked each other. Would have made the movie a lot better. This next headline is an oil painting I have uh, commissioned of me and Santa Claus sucking each other off. It's like one darn second, okay, guys? You know, it's like, I've heard of holiday cheer, but this is ridiculous, right, right? It's like, you know, Santa's cum probably tastes like candy canes, right, man? Okay, I'm Dave Lyle. This has been Headline. There's Dave Leno. But up, uh oh, folks, look who's coming over. It's our nosy neighbor, Mrs. Fairchild. Hello, Ron and Fez. Oh. I just wanted to stop by and make sure everything's okay over here. I noticed a lot of characters coming in and out. Yeah, it has been. Did you hear what happened down the block at Tiger Woods' house? I, I, I heard his little Swedish wife, he ran over him with the SUV. Have you heard anything about this? Mm. Not that it's any of my business, but I think they should both be deported. We don't need any of that kind of stuff in this neighborhood. Speaking of neighborhoods, how much do you think Opie and Anthony make? I heard it's quite a lot. And it all couldn't be from the radio business, could it? I heard something about selling drugs. I'd hate to see that happen in this neighborhood. And what's going on with our east side Dave? I heard he got drunk and ate his baby. Is that true? <laughs> he's the one with the gay brother, isn't he? Do you know if he's a top or a bottom or whatever they call it? It would be good to know, especially if he's planning on moving into this neighborhood. 
And how's our little Chris Stanley? I don't know if you heard about it. Both parents murdered and a cousin too, I believe. So sad to think something like that could happen in this neighborhood. And how are things here at Sirius XM? I heard Martha Stewart's going back to jail. Is that true? And what about Barbara Walters? I hear that's not her real hair. Is that true? Well, I best be running along very busy. I'm going to read Cousin Brucey's mail. I want to find out what his mortgage payments are. That's something very important in this neighborhood. All right, bye-bye. There he goes. Oh, thank God she's gone. That's our nosy neighbor, Mrs. Fairchild. Uh, oh, here comes a, a radio legend uh, from Sports Radio. It's Mike Francesa. Mike He's Mike Duff. I'm Mike Francesa, and this is Mike Dup. Mike Dup, Francesa Mike. Derek Jeter, named Sportsman of the Year. I'm so lonely without Mad Dog. Lonely, I am. Jeter, year, Sportsman, the. Where's the dog? I was out on the island with Roe and the kids. Kids, Roe, island, out. I was. Said to myself, I wish I owned Secretariat. I wish I could ride a horse. I'd be like Mike John Wayne Francesa. Where's dog, Eddie? Eddie, wake up. Where's Dog? Is he coming back? Where's Dog? Allen Iverson makes his Sixers part two debut. Debut, two part six in Iverson, Allen, row. Eddie, get me Chernoff on the line. Does he know where Dog went? Eddie, wake up. Where's, get Chernoff. Maybe we should put one of those lost dog flyers up, Eddie. Eddie, folks, the idea that Joe DiMaggio would have just automatically... Folks... Idea. The idea that he would have hit 60 home runs in Fenway is like, Ro and I went Christmas shopping the other day. Used to buy presents for Mad Dog. He got me a Mickey Mail baseball card once. Hey, you think he'll get me a Christmas present this year? Hey, could you tell him I'd like a Yankee sweater? Sweater Yankees I'd like. The idea that Tom Brady is not the same Tom Brady as 2004 Tom Brady, which in my opinion wasn't as good as 2001 Tom Brady, who took a backseat to 2007 Tom Brady, but definitely superior to 2003 Tom Brady is like insane. It's like we should get all the Tom Brady's together and clone them like Django Fett. Hey, which one you like better, Django or Boba? Eddie! Hey! I, I like I like Boba better, Eddie, because he reminded me of Mad Dog. Imagine if Mad Dog had a jetpack, Eddie. Eddie, a thought occurred to me. Maybe Mad Dog's in the Starlock pit. Get Eddie, Eddie, get churn off to call Jabba and see if Mad Dog's in the Starlock pit, Eddie. Pit. Starlock, Mad Dog, churn off. Uh, it's been my, uh, it's, what's my, this has uh, been mic'd up with Mike Francesa. Francesa, Mike. All right, there he goes, and, uh, oh, geez, look who's coming along. It's Dwayne, the guy in favor of torture. Hey, it's Dwayne, the guy in favor of torture. We got those 9-11 trials coming up in New York City. You know what those guys should get instead of a trial? Torture. Instead of a warm, cozy co courtroom, what they really need is their dicks cut off. Try playing a terrorist pro plot with no dick. I don't think you can. See the assholes started shooting up a community college in Virginia? Lucky no one was killed. Know what they ought to do? Take this guy out and torture him. See how many colleges he feels like shooting up after he's had his dick cut off. The big global warming conference is going on somewhere in Europe. These guys who hate global warming, how are they allowed to walk the streets? They need to be locked up and tortured. Cut their dicks off and let them stand there and tell you how hot it is. It's not going to happen. The movie Avatar is opening soon. I'm telling you, we need to torture those blue guys. Just cut their blue dicks off and all our troubles will go away. I'm telling you. In Cleveland, why hasn't Brown's coach Eric Mangini been tortured yet? And someone answer this question. Why does he still have his dick? It should have been cut off sometime around week seven. I'm Dwayne, the guy in favor of torture. And the time for torture is now. All right, there goes Dwayne. The guy in favor of torture. Uh, but it is time for uh, business uh, talk to start. So it's Carlito's Way Business Report. I'm Carlito Bragante, and this is Carlito's Way Business Report. NASDAQ dropped over 16 points yesterday, Dave. That's a loss. Something you don't know about, climbing. You're just used to the lawyers and monies. What do you know about the NASDAQ, Dave? 
Keep an eye on the Suzuki Motor Corporation, Road 80 Points. They can't teach you that in school, Kleiman. Can't teach you about Suzuki's on your yacht. Sterling Correctional Facilities in Grinhaven and Sing Sing not been in vain. Now I read the journal. Now I know where my money is going, Carlito. Business report. Don't pull your money out of Cisco Systems just yet, Dave. No, it dropped 1.65%, Kleiman. But I think this stock's a winner. I know you've heard this rap before, Dave, but it's changed. I changed. Five years to accurately predict the market. You know what that means, Dave? You don't know. Only market you've seen is a supermarket, Kleiman. And let me tell you, you can't make your money buying eggs, Dave. Last tip. Texas Instruments Incorporated raised its quarter current profit forecast and said revenue would reach the high end of its target, Dave. Could be good for your money, Carmen. Maybe use that money to get out. No room in the city for big hearts, Dave. Can't come with me on this trip now. Get in the shakes. Last call for drinks. Bar's closing down. Hope the Dow rises. I'm Carlito Brigante. It's been Carlito's way. Business report. There you have it, the Carlitos Way Business Report. But uh, it's kind of exciting because look who's stopping in here today. It's the mother from Precious. Hey, you! Any of you see my daughter, Precious? If you do, you tell her to get her fat ass home because I got things to throw at her and uh, hit her with kitchen items. By the way, do you have a frying pan I could borrow to swing at her fat head? I don't know why they call her precious. Usually something is precious because there's not much of it. I'd call her opposite of precious because there is plenty of her. Her name ought to be Abundance. Abundance, get in here. Let me tell you about my precious. She's a dummy. Don't nobody want her. Don't nobody need her except me around dinner time. And she says I abuse her. Abuse. You want to talk about abuse? Try pushing something that big through your JJ. She says she wants to go to school, but I tell her why. They got enough buses there. She's so big, she ought to get adopted by that lady from the Blind Side movie. Make Precious into a Baltimore Raven. Now I'm hungry. You plan on putting some food in that frying pan? Oh, and now you're going to sit there and judge me and write those notes on your pad about who you think I am. I need something to eat. I got to find my daughter, Precious, so she can boil me a big pot of pork products. Precious! Precious! Get down here! That was the mother from Precious. And look who's coming in now. It's Bryant Gumble with Real Porn. <coughs> Good evening. I'm Bryant Gumble. <laughs> And tonight, oh, yeah. Keep and tonight on HBO's Real Porn, Bernie Goldberg visits the valley and gets a job as a fluffer. This expose promises to be quite cummy. Oh, yeah. Keep then we have a heartwarming story about a man in a wheelchair who lost his legs in a fishing accident, yet still finds time to jerk off to hardcore porn that features other cripples. Oh, yeah. Keep Following that, Frank DeFord profiles 82-year-old Dick Strong, world's oldest gay porn star. It's just an interesting tale of a man, an old man who still likes blowjobs. Watch as he and Frank engage in sodomy. Oh, yeah. Keep sucking. Next, we have Armin Katane's update on clown porn. People who dress up as clowns. And then we have intercourse. I, for one, can't wait to jack off while watching this segment. Oh, yeah. Keep sucking. After that, Mary Carrillo tapes herself getting fucked by a horse. I sell it on the street for $15. Oh, yeah. Keep sucking. I'm Brian Cumble. This has been HBO's Real Porn. Oh, yeah. Keep sucking. There goes Brian Gumble, and uh, it seemed like an SCTV to me. It's very, very subtle, very nice. Uh-oh, this happens every Christmas. It's the inappropriate Santa. Ho, ho, ho! Hi, boys and girls! It's inappropriate Santa! I just came from the North Pole where I've been very busy! Ho, ho, ho! I've been making toys, getting my sleigh ready, and filming bestiality porn starring the reindeer! Ho, ho, ho! That Cupid's gonna be quite the star! I'm gonna end up losing her full-time to the animal porn industry! 
I'm here to make sure all the little boys and girls get what they want for Christmas. Ho, ho, ho! You know what would be a fun toy? A Barbie doll that masturbates herself. Even I would play with that for hours. Ho, ho, ho! And I want to remind the children that I'm going to come deliver toys to each and every one of them this Christmas Eve. Except for the bur burn victim children. They skeeve inappropriate Santa. It's bad enough coming down a chimney, but I swear I can still smell the burnt hair and skin. It's enough to make me puke up my cookies that they left for me. Ho, ho, ho! But I love it when the boys and girls all sit on my lap and tell me their heart's desire for Christmas. And it doesn't matter how rich or poor they are, or how smart they are in school, or even if they've been good or bad, they all get me hard sitting on my lap. Ho, ho, ho! The way they all squirm around so nervously, they just rub my candy cane the right way. And there's someone I know who is on the naughty list this year. That's Mrs. Claus, who started my day with a hearty rim job. What could I say? She loves burying her face in some Claus ass. Well, I'm off back to the North Pole. Today we're gambling on elf fights. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Bye, inappropriate Santa. Bye. See you next year. Hey, everybody, if you love southern fried blue collar comedy and who doesn't you're going to be crazy about davy red yeah good evening everybody i'm davy red southern comedian let it be known my brother scooter is a real piece of work he says to me davy you know what i don't like about mexicans i said to him what scooter he says the fact that they're from mexico let it be known <laughs> My wife's always on my case. She says to me, Davey, you don't make love to me anymore the way you used to. I said, honey, that's because two reasons. Number one, you got fat. Number two, I'm fucking your sister. <laughs> this president's something else. Other day, I saw a picture of him at the White House. I said to myself, how would that black guy get elected anyway? Let it be <laughs> Speaking of blacks, my brother Scooter's a little off kilter. He says to me a couple nights ago, Davey, you know what I don't like about the blacks? I said, what, Scooter? He said, the skin color. Let it be known. <laughs> Kids are just running wild these days. The other day, my son threw a tantrum when I wouldn't buy him an Xbox. I said to him, stop throwing a tantrum or I'll take my belt off and give you so many welts, people will think you're entering a Rocky Dennis looking like contest. Let it be known. <laughs> My mother-in-law really gets on my nerves the other day. She said, Davey, do you know CPR? I'm having trouble breathing. I said to her, my house, my rules. Now die already, bitch. I'm trying to watch the Sooners game. <laughs> my brother Scooter really doesn't like Asians. Let him out. I'm Davey Red, Southern comedian. Let it be known. There goes Davey Red. The Southern Comedian getting, I guess, lukewarm applause there. I thought it would be better. I thought it would be better, but... See if Maybe I... David Rich should have pulled a better applause drop. Uh-oh. <laughs> Never expected to see this uh, come on to the show. It's Fez's heart. Hi. <sighs> I'm Fez's heart. I'm sorry I'm so out of breath. I'm just so thirsty. Does anyone have any water? I've had nothing but bacon grease to drink for two weeks straight. I am exhausted. Fez was just looking at some papers. Oh, I don't know why paper has to be so heavy. It's horrible. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did I just stop beating? I stopped beating, didn't I? Wait, there it is. Okay, we're okay. We're okay. You know what really wears me out? All the breathing. Think about it. It's nonstop. Inhale, exhale. Struggle to inhale, exhale. It goes on all day. I never get a break. You would think all the ice cream would help, but it doesn't. Not one bit. And the nervousness doesn't help either. Fess's cable went out and he had me beating like I was running a marathon. I constantly feel like I'm going to explode, and I never know what's going to do it. Everything is a shock. A family member could die, or Fez gets the wrong change at a store, and I'm thumping just the same. It's not easy being Fez's heart. The only cardiovascular I get is when he's turning the pages of a comic book. A double issue is a real workout. 
but I get plenty of vegetables, just as long as he remembers to order green peppers on the pizza. As long as the blood's flowing, I'm fine. Unfortunately, trying to get blood through these arteries is like trying to get Kirstie Alley through a size 2 tube top. Hey, did I stop beating again? I did. I did. I'm dead, right? Right? That was uh, Fez's cry for help. I mean, Fez's heart. But let's go over and see an old favorite of the show. It's Hosp. Hi, this is Hosp, the gay Sean Connery. I don't know how I got caught up in this battle of the characters. Usually people forget about me and my fat ass. Hosh. Maybe I could plug my charity walk again. It was quite a success. Me and my chubby ankles raised twelve dollars. That's like enough to buy a fifth of a Wii game for some kid. Boy am I a beefy loser. Hosh. If there's one thing I do know, it's being the gay Sean Connery. You may have seen me in Cum Raper, Cock No Pushy, The Man with the Golden Cum, and Live and Let Cum in My Wide Ashhole, Hosh. They call me Hosh because I used to work in a hospital. I was a candy striper, but my fat stomach ate all the candy and I got let go, Hosh. If I was three feet taller, I'd be in shape. As it is, I look like an out of shape Louis Anderson, Hosh. Well, we do have the same sexual preferences now that I think about it, Hosh. Sucking cock, fucking dick, Hosh. My cock looks like someone glued a Rice Krispie to my pelvis, Hosh. Other movies I was in, Thunderballs on my chin, for your jizz only. Hush. Gotta go now, I have to remind my family that I'm related to them. Kiss my fat ass goodbye, Hush. Bye, Hush. That was uh, Hush. Uh, and let's go over to Fez's eighth character, who doesn't like Piss Stained Pete. Hi guys, it's Piss Stained Pete. Things aren't going real well for me, and I think I finally figured out why. It's this big piss stain on my pants. I can't get a job. I go on interviews and everyone says I'm qualified. Then they see my piss stain and tell me I'm not right for the job. I understand. Nobody wants a guy with an enormous piss stain as a waiter. You know, the customer is seated and I'm standing, so the piss stain is right there at eye level. Not going to help your appetite any. A piss stain. I wanted to be a teacher, but I couldn't. Know why? Right. The piss stain. They told me standing in front of a class of 8th graders with a piss stain on my pants would be distracting. I get it. What are the kids going to focus on? The Battle of 1812 or why does that guy have a huge piss stain on his pants? Piss stain's going to win every single time. Dating isn't easy. I showed up at a girl's house. I can bring candy or flowers or even jewelry, but all they seem to notice is the piss stain. I try putting a large chocolate stain on my shirt. I figured that would be more noticeable than a piss stain. Didn't work. I guess piss beats out chocolate every time when it gets in what gets noticed by a lady. Even if a girl does like me, she's never going to blow me. Piss stain stops them right in their tracks. It's hard to ignore when your zipper's wet. I'm going to get going. It's starting to smell pissy in here. And I think it's me. There's Fez Watley, and that's his eighth and final character. <laughs> Excellent job. And who doesn't like piss stain hosp? Now, uh, Dave, you have more characters planned? Yes, I do. I'd like to go out on a medley. Oh, a medley of characters. You have that right. Go okay. ahead, please. Help yourself. Okay, here we go. Hey, Ron and Fez, good to be here! Sorry, I just farted a little semen! Hey, my... <laughs> my thing, hey, this is fuck twat talking! Forgot to introduce myself! Hey, kids, what do you get when you cross a midget with a lion? A, a clown who wants to fuck the boat! Owls! How many chicken, chickens does this take to screw in a light bulb? I don't know, I just shat in my pants! Herpes! This guy walks into a bar, when he heads to the bathroom, I lock us both in and sodomize him! Piggly Wiggly! Oh. I hate my mother-in-law. She gives shitty job blowjobs. And by that, I mean she shits when she gives me blowjobs. Yucky, Bucky. I do a balloon trick, but my fingers are a little slippery from all the cum I was just playing with. Dicks and cocks. Worst part of being a clown is being arrested on alleged ch molestation charges. Waka waka. I wish Fozzie Bear was still alive so I could gulp his jizz. Nicky Sticky. Now it's time for a song. My name is Fuck Twat the Clown. I've been to prison three times. I can't tell you what for because some of the victims are probably working in this building. Scooby Dooby Cock! Hey, what did the puppy say to the kitten? 
Peden. I'm gonna come all over your face, Needly Peedly! I'm fucked like a clown, go fuck! <laughs> oh, that was fucked what the clown. Clown, now here's his next big uh, character, the puppet, and everybody loves, it's Little Davy. Hi, everyone, it's me, Eastside Dave, and my puppet, Lil Davy! Hi, Lil Davy! How are you? Okay? Just okay? What's wrong, Lil Davy? I have a small case of the measles! <laughs> I get it, because you're small. Hey, hey, uh, hey, Big Davy! Guess who my favorite mini monkey is? I don't know, who is your mini uh, monkey favorite, Lil Davy? Lil Davy Jones! <laughs> Big Davy! Yes, Lil Davy? Cincinnati Red, in my opinion. Who? Little Davy Concepcion. Because <laughs> he's little. Oh, Big Davy. Yes, Little Davy. You know which tiny talk show host I like the most? No. Who? Little Davy Letterman. <laughs> yeah, I see. Hey, PD. Yes, Little Davy. Who's the greatest miniature Max manager? Who? Little Davy Johnson. Right. I see. I only got to get it. Big Davy. What is it, Little Davy? Best no idea. Little Davy Grohl. <laughs> Best in charge the singer. No, I don't know. Little Davy Bowie. <laughs> Best record label owner. I don't care. Little Davy Gavin. <laughs> That's enough. We have to say goodbye, Little Davy. Goodbye, assholes. <laughs> oh my God. I didn't expect this. It's Bearded Paul McCartney. Hello, Rolling fans. It's me, Bearded Paul McCartney. Great to be here. Yes, sir. Well, it all started in the Danka Dunk year of 1942, Skittle Waddle. I came out of me mom's uterus in the bright blue Chickamazoo called Earth. Well, hold. Don't play this song yet. I'm not finished. He's not finished yet. I'm not finished. Take the song down. Hold on, I'm not the... Kind of reminds me of the time that George and I were on a ferry in Germany and the captain said, Ich bin van Buten, which I believe translate to Chingy Chongy, where are the grapes? <laughs> no, I'm not finished! Okay, this is my beard. There he goes. <laughs> There's Beard of Paul McCartney. And that's all the characters. All right, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Uh, how many characters, uh, how long did that whole bit last? Did anybody see what time we started? I think we started very close to 1.30. I had no idea it was going to go that long. <laughs> that that was going to be a 30-minute contest. It's just fucking ridiculous <laughs> to me. I, here's my favorite thing. Both you fucking hacks will just have a central theme and hammer it over and over, even if you're just repeating the character's name. It is embarrassing how much you both write like each other. Tell us what you think as the judges uh, put in their votes. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. All right, I am waiting now to for the uh, votes to come in. We've got two secret listeners, myself. And, of course, uh, the only other members of the staff today. And then we'll also have favorite character. Favorite uh, character will be uh, Interesting. Well, there's a range to choose from. Yeah. Yeah, there was quite a few of them. And uh, still waiting. Sky's coming in now. Scotty coming in. There is uh, no way that we could sit back and say there was any losers here. But we will be picking uh, a loser. Hmm. Still putting these together. And then we'll go back and check in. All right. So far, favorite characters are Bryant Gumble, Porn. Oh, yes. That's one for me. Bryant Gumble <laughs> of Porn. It's like waiting for Oscar nominations. It really is that I'm way. It's like that, uh, getting up early. Carlito's Way business report. Ooh. Dwayne in favor of torture. Nice. And Mike Francesca. <laughs> uh, and it goes like this. Overall, four to one. And I will let you know that I am 
the one. Even though it's secret ballot, I went against the other four. The winner today, Davey Mack. Oh, Davey Mack. Oh, my God. But that's nice. Even though if it was up to me, I would have called this a fucking tie because I was dying throughout it. <laughs> I'm incredibly impressed that Fez Watley... Fez is back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Congratulations, Dave. That was really, really fucking Thank funny you. shit. Uh, both of you. I do have to admit that the Mike Francesca I picked also because it got so fucking retarded <laughs> after a while. But both you guys, seriously, as well as being funny, you're just awful writers. <laughs> and that that made it all the all the best. Um, uh, Marshall Bill, what do you got for us? I thought Fezzy felt more comfortable in his character, so I'd, I'd have to give it to Fezzy. All right. Here's Joe in Connecticut. Hey. Hey, I thought uh, it was five to three Fez. Fez's heart was the number one character on the show. Oh, Fez's heart was my least favorite because it made me too nervous. <laughs> Andrew, what do you got? Eastside Dave, Davey Red, Shit's Nolte. You killed it. Uh, Shit's Nolte might have been my least favorite character. <laughs> Jameson, what do you got? Dave absolutely murdered it. Better preparation. Good job, Fez, but Dave killed it. Good job, they, Dave. They were both mo a lot more prepared than I thought. Uh, Will, in Charlotte, you're on a Fez. Um, I love the Tony Dungy. I have to ask why that uh, Pistain Pete sounded more like Bryant Gumbel than Bryant Gumbel did. Um, <laughs> it's always better to go first, I noticed, as you went along. Uh -huh. It was incredible how much we're like... Haven't we already just heard that voice? <laughs> and it would go back and forth where you would either copy yourselves, right. your other characters, yeah. or each other. I, I stopped at one point and said, I shouldn't have gone first. I know Dave's going to have a Santa character. Oh, that's a smart move. I was expecting, I, I questioned myself because I figured Dave's well, going to have Santa. His puppet characters were kind of, and you have to remember that Dave's characters are more beloved since they're, they've been around. Yeah, and Fez's, uh, quite frankly, are torn from the headlines <laughs> or movie trailers that he's just seen. Uh, Robert, you're on Fez. I think if they would have, uh, if they would have been allowed to pit their own character against the other character, it would have been a little bit better for Fez. <laughs> he lost by one. <laughs> well, it was. It, 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 <clears throat> Thank there, you. There's a lot to learn from this. There's no doubt about it. Mike and Georgia, you're on Ron and Fez. Fez killed them. The blindside mom was perfect. Huge fan of blindside mom. Uh, particularly <laughs> since she used every fucking line in the trailer. <laughs> Leanne Tui. Yeah. The beautiful Leanne Tui. Every <laughs> line from the trailer. Bill in Oklahoma. Hey, I'll put my foot vote in for Fezzy because, uh, Dave, you're retard. When you put uh, your little small puppet guy up there, you asked him what was wrong. He said he had a small case of the measles. Wouldn't yeah. it make more sense to say he had small pox? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's more predictable, mister. Uh, no, that would have been funny. That would have no. been traditionally funny. <laughs> Mike, you're on Fez. Hey, Rob. Yeah. Rob Fez, uh, I think Dave won. I think uh, Davey Red pulled it off. That, that was the big winner there. Uh, every day. All right, thanks. Uh, Johnny in Kansas, you're on Fez. Yeah, I thought Fez ran away with it, especially the heart bit and the inappropriate Santa. I was laughing hard at gag. I, I did not think, uh, although I will admit, the heart bit made me too nervous. <laughs> I didn't think Fez had a mess, missed up. <laughs> Eight fucking in a row that I would at least give him base hits to. Matt in Virginia, you're on running Fez. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Uh, I want to know if uh, Precious's mom, uh, if Smoke comes into a room before she does, and w if she recently retired but just uh, went wrestling. And well, if, if anything, that was closer to Dusty Roads. But, you know, these guys aren't impressionists. They're just <laughs> fucking it's our a couple of ham and eggers grabbing some ham and eggs. Watch the trailer. See if she doesn't sound like Dusty Roads. Anthony, you're on Fez. Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Ronnie. Uh, my favorite character was Dave and his puppet baby girl. Who? Um, uh, that's why my puppet my was puppet first. Was Thank you. Uh, Jay, Jay in New Jersey, you're on Run of Fez. My favorite character was uh, Fez is doing the Precious Mom. Mm. <laughs> that uh, was great. Sherry, you're on Run of Fez. Um, yeah, Fez's heart nailed it. Fez's heart got, it seemed like it was bigger for people who don't love Fez. <laughs> that they got a bigger <laughs> kick out of it than the, those of us that actually worry about Fez. Will in Milwaukee, you're on Run of Fez. Fez, you are back. 
Fez is back. Thank you, Will. Uh, by the way, Fezzy, if you remember, the last time people were chanting Fez is back is when you went out and did characters. Mm -hmm. You seem to be happier doing characters than you are playing the Fez character. Sean and Georgia, you're on Ron Fez. I, I got to say that Tony Dungy was the best character I've ever heard. And also, I want to know why Dave's little Davey sounds exactly like Roberta. Oh, uh, yeah, he doesn't have a lot of movement there. R no, Roberto was killed. Uh, Richie, you're on Ron Fez. Uh, hey, Mr. B. No. I thought that uh, Fez had uh, some of the better characters, but overall, I think Davy Mac took it. I just think uh, the, uh, the 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 originality was uh, all Davy Mac. But Fez, I'm glad you're back, buddy. Maximum, you're on the run of Fez show. Yeah, I thought Fez's characters were better, so overall, I give it to him. But Davy's production, he definitely did better there. Some very strong uh, production. Uh, Chad, Chad, you're on the run of Fez. Hey. Davey, rock that yeah. shit. Leno was the bomb. And I want to know how long it took them to develop these characters. Well, I am going to say this. Uh, Dave's, some of those have been captured. They're already... First, Dave Dave Leno is the funniest fucking <laughs> stupidest thing ever. And the Mike Francesca had fucking finally has melted and molded down into some disgusting freak show <laughs> well, I've been so far away him. from the real person. Just grunts. Uh, <laughs> what was Eddie? He always shouts at his producer, Eddie, <laughs> Yeah, off the mic. Eddie, get me some stuff. And then when he was yelling stuff about, you think he's on Tantooine? <laughs> uh, here's what's going to happen for the next one. Oh. No character may be repeated. Oh, Jesus. Next contest, and I'll give a number, but next contest... All new. Okay. okay. All new, all fresh. Now, these characters that you're doing now, I expect to come back on the show quite a bit. <laughs> but uh, until then... What about when mine are out of theaters? Um, Let's hold on for a, for a DVD release. Um, Jay, Texas, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, good morning, show. Uh, hello, yeah. show. Uh, i got to get in a vote for Piss Stain Pete. You know, he's a good guy. Piss Stain just can't catch a break because of those damn piss stains. I mean, what's piss, he going to do? Piss Stain just came too late in the game for me. I think if he would have came in earlier, like second or third, I might have loved him. Uh -huh. But coming in eight, I'm like, I'm, <laughs> you know, it, it's almost like you're at the improv and it's now 2.30 in the morning. He's just like, okay, <laughs> let's just get going. Dustin, you're on a fez. Hey, it was close, but Dave won it with uh, the line, uh, my penis looked like somebody glued a Rice Krispie to my belt. Uh, you can't beat that. Uh, both of them did great. The uh, votes came up. Fez lost this 4-1. to one. Dave also had this, but for me, you could have put you could have put an envelope between these two. They were so close. And I gave it to, Fe to Fezzy. Mainly I'm being incredibly proud of him for coming in and doing that stuff. Dave is already a maniac <laughs> without any self-control. <laughs> the date of uh, next week's will be next Thursday. Uh -huh. We're going to be looking at seven new characters. Oh, my God. Seven new really ones next week? Thursday. Seven new characters in a week. All right. From scratch. This is a crazy thing. Do you ever worry about such things? No. Uh, I... Uh... I don't have the greatest bathroom etiquette in general, so I'm not. I'm not going to give a fuck. Well, you shit, the you shit in the urinal, if, if, which is a mistake. If a janitor comes in, I'll I'll even make noises just to make them uncomfortable. What is that? Well, I got to clean that up now. <laughs> what is that about? Uh oh, ladies and gentlemen, that only means one thing. It's the Siren Showdown. Time to get the characters back into the show. Here is what... And by the way, I haven't discussed this with either one of you. I need you to turn your pages over. Okay. And uh, it is seven. Seven characters. And you each came in with seven. Very, very, very excited about this. <laughs> uh, Fezzi, mm -hmm. it's going to be you versus Dave. In seven characters of fun and excitement. Fezzi, call it in the air. Tails. Tails it is. Do you choose to go first or second? 
I will accept this time. Whoa. I will go first. Okay. Never. Fezzy, I have known you for so long. I have never known you. Excuse me, Fez. I don't have time to talk to you right now. Uh huh. Because coming into the stu- uh, studio, it's Cooper Manning, the dis- disgruntled other Manning brother, Cooper Manning. This is Cooper, the other Manning brother with a look at the NFL. I say look at the NFL because that's all I can do with my bad back. I look. I don't even try to go to the game. The doctors say just going through a turnstile at the stadium could kill me, all right? There's only two games worth watching this weekend. Tonight, it's the Jacksonville Jaguars at home against the Annapolis Colts, led by my brother, Mr. My Back Feels Fantastic, Peyton Manning. The Colts try to keep their perfect season going. That's my brother. Perfect season, perfect life, perfect spine. God, I hope he loses. The Colts should have no problem with the Jags. Of course not. Why would the great Peyton Manning have any problems? He gets up every day with a great life. Me, I got a spine that sounds like it's made out of Rice Crisps, Krispies. Snapping, crackling, and popping just as I try to tie my shoes. The other game is Monday night. The Giants taking on the Redskins. Everyone says my little brother Eli is struggling. Struggling with what? His big house, his expensive cars, or his perfectly aligned spinal column? Real struggle, Eli. You know what a struggle is? Having a Twizzler as a backbone. That's a struggle. Well, I just want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. I'm really looking forward to it. As my brothers give my mom and dad big giant gift wrap boxes of cash for Christmas, and I give them packs of gum, because anything else would be too heavy for me to carry. This is Cooper Manning, the other Manning brother, for the NFL. There goes Cooper Manning. That's the disgruntled uh, uh, other Manning brother. What does he, does he have? Oh, some, it's some, some sort of narrowing of the spinal column. Yeah, it's some kind of a, one of the... Uh, Oops, Fezzy, don't have time to talk to you right now. Look who's coming into the studio. It's Mario, the rejected Jersey Shore show applicant. Hey, I'm Mario, rejected Jersey Shore applicant. It's me, Mario. I don't like hair gel. It's way too sticky. It's me, Mario. I weigh a staggering 135 pounds. Not very buff, I guess. It's me, Mario. Tanning is for the birds. I prefer to use Copper Tone 55. It's me, Mario. I don't like going to the beach. My hobbies include crosswood puzzles and playing the fiddle. It's me, Mario. My motto, why try and go after chicks when you could stay at home for the night and masturbate? It's me, Mario. It's Mario, the rejected Jersey Shore Show applicant. Fuck off. It's me, Mario. Oh, I'll see you later, Mario. Better luck next time. I think they'll probably do a Jersey Shore, too. Um, Coming into the studio right now. Oh, geez. It's Cousin Roy with an incest tutorial. Hey, Cousin Roy here. This is an incest tutorial. Well, 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 Christmas time is here again, and that means a time for family. A time for families to be together. You know, real close. Especially cousins and girl cousins. It's time to turn down the lights, light a fire, and sit around the tree with maybe a favorite girl cousin. Maybe have some eggnog. Maybe spill a little bit of that eggnog on her pajama top. Better slip out of that, cuz. It's okay. We're family. I used to see it like that all the time when you were a baby. Then we enjoy all our great family traditions. The annual Christmas oil massage and the great holiday game we play, Find the Mistletoe. Then it's time to exchange gifts. Cuz, you give me something. I love it so much. I give you a big Christmas hug and kiss. And my tongue says thank you while it's still in your mouth. Then I give you something. Something that needs to be wrapped before I give it to you. So we don't get a, you know, a new retarded kid in this family. Know what I mean? Then, uh uh-oh, it's getting late. We need to be in bed before Santa comes. Or at least before I do. We get under the covers nice and warm. And you ask me what's that poking you? And I just tell you it's a reindeer antler. Don't worry about it. It's the perfect Christmas. As long as my mom and dad don't find out. I'm Cousin Roy, and we're related. Don't say we dated. Sex outside the family's overrated. This has been my incestatorial. Thank you. All right, that was Fez Watley with an autobiographical uh, incestatorial. Don't have, Roy. Uh, don't have all day with you here, though, Fez, because look who's coming in. 
Um, it's Dennis Miller's non obscure but rather obvious pop culture references show. Yeah, hey, this is Dennis Miller's non obscure but rather obvious pop culture references show. I heard Tiger Woods cheated on his wife. You might as well call him Bill Clinton. Boy, that Dick Cheney is ugly. I see a picture, I say, who is this, Dick Cheney or Susan Boyle? The newest and largest NASA spacecraft just launched. Wasn't sure if it was a spacecraft or precious. Global warming is at a peak, according to Al Gore. This guy's so boring, he reminds me of Randy Jackson. Who's for this health care plan anyway? Might as well be the new We Mario Brothers game with Luigi having the flu. <laughs> Pakistan had another bombing. These people bomb more than Adam Lambert at a People's Choice Awards. <laughs> Lions only won two games. Talk about NBC's The Biggest Loser. <laughs> Hillary Clinton's visiting Europe, more like humans from Avatar visiting the blue people without the cankles. <laughs> Speaking of Avatar, if I wanted to see a blue person group, I'd read the obituary of Captain Lou and Oral Roberts. <laughs> I'm Dennis Miller. This has been the non-obscure but rather obvious pop culture references show, babe. There goes Dennis Miller's not obscure, but rather obvious pop culture's references show. But why slow down? It's Baxter, the serial killer who kills people who do good. I'm Baxter. I live by a code. A code my father gave me. He told me there are people in this world, awful people who do good. They're kind and generous and friendly and they need to be eliminated. I'm talking about people like 72-year-old Betty Smith. I watch her shoveling snow out of her neighbor's driveways just to be helpful. As I watch more, I think she could be using that shovel to dig her own grave. I do my research. I have to know how good she is before I can kill her. I see she bakes cookies and takes them to the homeless. I could give her a second chance. But if I let her live, she'd just end up adopting more abandoned pets or taking in foster kids. No, this has to stop tonight. Someone that good doesn't deserve a second chance. My father always taught me to cover my tracks, to make sure there aren't any witnesses. I follow my father's advice and teaching. I could wait and get her on Tuesday, the day she reads to the blind. Sorry, officer, we didn't see anything. She's so good and kind, she probably wouldn't even mind being murdered by a serial killer. She'll tell me everything's okay to go ahead and kill her, that I'm just doing my job. No, 72-year-old Betty Smith, you won't play your mind games on me. Even as you nip me a sweater while bleeding to death, it won't stop me. I'm Baxter. I kill really, really nice people. There goes uh, Baxter. I'm waiting for one of these guys to do uh, Hasper the Mean Ghost because it seems like we're just on a, uh, an opposite thing. Have you noticed, Hicks? Just, just a little bit. Are the judges working in the other room? Yes, both m myself and Scotty, yes. All right, perfect. Uh, I hate to interrupt you, though, but here comes Robert Crumb, the comic book comedian. Hi, Ark Crumb here. No, I like more in a broad and a bikini. A nude broad who I'd jerk off to. <laughs> you know what's better than a frog? A broad dressed up like a frog so I can jerk off to her, Charles. <laughs> you know what's better than Jupiter? Venus. And Charles and I can jerk off to it. <laughs> I don't like Marilyn Monroe. Photoshop of me and Marilyn pissing on each other would be a lot better and then we could jerk off Charles. Charles was always a smart one. He once said, No would be better than jerking off, putting an unlit candle in your ass, then jerking off. <laughs> I don't like the Grateful Dead so much, except uh, I like the uh, the Jefferson Airplane. And I jerked off to Grace Slick. 
Mark Crum, you've been a real jerk off audience. Uh, thank you, Robert Crumb, but we got to keep the show moving along. It's Mona, the one woman that even Tiger Woods wouldn't sleep with. Well, hello, hello, I'm Mona, and you want to hear something crazy? That Tiger Woods wouldn't even sleep with me. What's his problem? I wasn't exactly plain hard to get. I told him I would even take it in my poop shoot, and he still didn't want to make love to me. He sleeps with every other woman in the country, and I'm not good enough for him. What is it? My tit? I would say tits, but for some reason I only grew one. The doctors say I'm some sort of medical miracle. I say I'm just a gal who only grew one tit, nothing special. So I got one tit. One big hairy tit in the center of my chest. So that gives Tiger Woods the right to ignore me? I don't think so. Or is it my legs? You know, I'm a hemophiliac, so I can't shave my legs for fear of bleeding to death. So it looks like I'm walking around on a pair of pine trees. That means me and Tiger Woods can't get together for a cup of coffee, then go back to my place and screw? It's ridiculous. He's got all the money in the world. If my osteoporosis hump bothers him that bad, he can pay to have it fixed. It's not like I'm tasking him to have kids with me. I can't anyway. The doctor tells me I got hard eggs. The sp no sperm can penetrate them. They're like tiny little kidney stones. Not that I want kids anyway. Who could hold a baby and feed it with this withered hand? You'd have to tape the bottle to this dead paw to get it in the kid's mouth. But just so you know, Tiger Woods, it's your loss. They say you like Swedish girls? Too bad. My, my crotch smells like meatballs. The doctors don't know why. It's weird. Hey, I wonder if John Daly is available. Uh, there he goes, Mona, the woman, or she goes, the, wo the one woman that even Tiger Woods won't sleep with. This is very exciting, though, because this is the first time ever in history this young man's going to come out here. And what a show business family he comes to us from. Let's hear it from for Dave's son, Stan McDonald. Hi, everyone. My name is Stan McDonald. Somebody help me. My daddy side Dave is going to kill us someday. Sometimes he likes to pretend we're having a hardcore match and he throws me on thumbtacks. That hurts. A couple of times he fell asleep with the cigarette and the carpet went on fire, singeing our dog. That was scary. Once he got the refrigerator confused with the microwave, and he ended up melting down my baby bottles. I'd laugh, but it's a true story. Sometimes my daddy Dave gets mad at the TV when his sports teams aren't doing so well, and he drinks and picks fights with the landlord. We're gonna get evicted, Daddy. Daddy doesn't know how to do math. He thinks the number after six is blue. Oh, Daddy. Daddy drinks and cries at the end of the Cheers episode where Woody and Kelly got married. That's so sad, Daddy. Daddy groans a lot in the garage when he thinks we've all gone to bed. There are dirty books in that garage. Oh, Daddy. Daddy thinks a donkey punch is what happens when donkeys get mad at each other. It's not what it is, Daddy. I'm Stan McDonald. I gotta go. Daddy's lit himself on fire again. Bye. Stan McDonald, Dave's son. And here's Ken, a guy who's got a real problem with Scott Bakula. Hey, this is Ken. And let me just say this. Scott Bakula, what's your fucking deal, man? I don't get you or where you're coming from. On Quantum Leap, you go time traveling? Hey, Scott Bakula, do me a favor. Just stay in your own time, man, okay? Just go back to whatever year you're supposed to be in and just stay put and keep your fat mouth shut. And what's with jumping into other people's bodies? What's the story there? You ain't happy with your own body, so you gotta go jumping into someone else's? That ain't right, man. I'm telling you, it just ain't right. Then you're on Star Trek. I don't get you, Scott Bakula. So all of a sudden, you think you're so much better than Captain Kirk or the other guy, the bald captain. Scott Bakula, you got so much fucking nerve. You really do. And somehow, you do the one Star Trek that isn't popular. How do you even pull that off? It's Star Trek. It's impossible to mess up. You go to weird planets and meet weird aliens. What's so hard about that, Scott Bakula? 
And what's with the name anyway, Bacula? Are you supposed to be some sort of freaking vampire or something? Now you got this new show with Ray Romano. Let me ask you this, why drag Ray Romano into this? Why do you have to get him involved in all your stupid crap? Just leave everyone the fuck alone, Scott Bacula. Nobody's bothering you, so why do you have to start shit? My name's Ken, and Scott Bacula, I got a real problem with you. There he is, Ken, the guy who's got a problem with Scott Bacula. Uh, this is a first for us. We've never been visited from somebody from another dimension. And it's the ghost of Harvey Milk. Hi, I'm the ghost of Harvey Milk. And let me tell you, it's really hot down here. Adam Lambert's having a good year. Piece of advice. Have some spare Twinkies to not get killed. Hey, it's not so bad. Down here, I get to make out with Mussolini. We got the same mustache. It's hotter than here down here. Hey, it's so hot down here, the cum that I swallow tastes like salty stew. It's so hot, even Truman Capote is taking his shirt off. And his nipples are hot, too. Josh Brolin's a dick. I'm the ghost of Harvey Milk. Vote for me. <laughs> the, ghost, the ghost of Harvey Milk. <laughs> it's hotter than here down here. It's hotter than here down here. Um, not sure how to introduce this uh, next performer. And I'll just say it's the Alzheimer's Bear. Hi, everybody. It's me. It's. Wait a minute, I forgot. That's right, I'm Alzheimer's Bear! Now, why did I come into this room? I don't remember. But I know you guys, right? It's it's Ron and... Oh, never mind, it's not important. Wait, I know you're my grandchildren, I remember now. It's just that sometimes, Alzheimer's Bear gets confused. One time I wandered away from the forest, and a nice police officer found me sitting outside a supermarket with no clothes on. I was very embarrassed. Then he had to remind me that I was a bear and didn't wear clothes. Who are you all again? President Eisenhower's a good man. He wants to protect the forest. Be sure to vote for him. I like kitties and pudding. The other day I was catching salmon out of the river and I caught one and I couldn't remember what I was supposed to do with it. I wore it as a hat for three days before someone told me I was supposed to eat it. Why would I eat my hat? I get so confused. Is today Saturday? My friend Yogi and I steal something on Saturday. What is it? It's picnic tables, picnic blankets, picnic something. I can't remember. Why am I so furry? Snakes aren't usually this furry. I am a snake, right? I don't remember. Wait a minute. I know what this is all about. You want to put me in a nursing home. Sure, I get a little confused, but that doesn't mean I can't take care of myself. Uh-oh, I just pooped. I'm a bear, and I guess that means I'm supposed to shit in a... a someplace. I can't remember. I guess I'll go wander into traffic now. Bye! Oh, goodbye, Alzheimer's bear. I think he was a cartoon bear. Uh, look who it is, everybody. It's Don Furick, Confused Braggart. Hey, I'm Don Furick, Confused Braggart, and guess what? I just got audited today. Yeah, my boss likes me so much, he's making me work on the weekends. My wife and I got a divorce. She got 70% of my earnings. My kid's a brainiac. He just got a D-plus in history. Girls tell me I'm below average in the sack. I saw an attractive woman with a flat tire on the side of the road. I just kept on driving. Brothers! Gotta go now. Have to go to court. Committed petty theft. Alright, uh, bad news everybody. These are the last two characters in the big siren uh, showdown. Um, and Fez Watley's bringing in, and this should be the cleanup hitter, Shirley Phelps Roper, the intolerant weather girl. I'm Shirley Phelps Roker with your intolerant weather report. There's a big cloud of Jesus-hating Jews in the Northeast. Bust because of Hanukkah. 
Light your candles now and get used to the flames because you're going to be feeling them for all eternity when you're burning in the fires of hell for not accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. In Washington, D.C., the temperature is rising with the number of sodomites in that town. They call themselves politicians, but we know anyone who's working on health care reform is really just performing sodomy in the eyes of the Lord. In Florida, expect heavy lightning, but just over the house of Tiger Woods. Tiger, expect a heavy burst of lightning right in your crotch, where, since you've decided to take it upon yourself to give in to temptation and crap on the marriage vows he, you took before God himself. So heavy lightning with a 100% chance of burning in hell for all eternity. Moving out west to California, in Hollywood, look for rain. And not the good wet kind that God sends to nourish the earth and all our crops. It'll be raining fire and brimstone as God finally takes his vengeance against the Hollywood fornicators. And destroys all you unrepentant sinners who peddle your pornography. And I'm talking to you, Pixar. And finally, in San Francisco... Partly cloudy with a good chance of plagues over the weekend. Expect pestilence, boils, and an increase in famine. And I would give you a 10-day forecast, but I expect God to destroy that great giant homo party of a city before then. This is Shirley Phelps Roper, Intolerant Weather Girl, reminding you an umbrella isn't going to save you from God. Nailed that voice. <laughs> so that was Shirley Phelps Roper and Carlito's Way Weather. Uh, this is Dave's last character, and it's Billy Malcolm, the dirty crooner. My dick hurts something awful. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Billy Malcolm, Malcolm, dirty crooner. Somebody's gonna fuck me till I bleed. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Billy Malcolm, dirty crooner. You can swing your cum, you can shoot your cum, you can sing to your cum, but don't poop on your cum. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Billy Malcolm, ba -ba 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 -ba. dirty crooner. Give me a dick and a cock and a slit and a twat. I'll fuck them both like a radio cowboy. Billy ba -ba 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 Malcolm, dirty crooner. My dad says to swallow, my mommy says to spit. I wish I didn't have parents. I gotta gulp some jizz. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Billy Malcolm. Good night, everybody. Good night. Ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> Fuck off. Ba -ba 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 -ba. There goes Billy Malcolm, ba -ba 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 -ba. the dirty crooner. Uh, give your opinions. 866 Ron Zero Fez. 866 Ron Zero Fez. After a while, the strangeness just fucking <laughs> grabs you. <laughs> like, there for a while, I thought I was normal. But I just, I got lost in it this time. <clears throat> like I was being smothered. <laughs> and it was oh, almost no. like you're into some wild sex thing. <laughs> and then, you know, you're like, hey, the choking's fun. But then you're like, uh-oh, I could die from this. <laughs> uh, waiting for the vo uh, votes to come over. Um, we already have had the secret listener vote come in. Now we're waiting for the staff votes to come over and be give, given to us. I'm also going to check for fave character. Fave character. And some of the fave characters uh, will make a comeback. Last time Dave was up, what was it, three to one? Uh, four. Four to one. Four to one. Yep. Uh, well, this time we only have four judges. Okay. So we may uh, get a tie. I don't think there's any losers, as you said last time. I think no. This time, I think there's two losers. <laughs> Seriously, I honestly, I no started way. getting weirded out. Uh, with I was just, I was finally laughing at how you guys would just take the opposite. How about Ranta Claus, the guy who comes and takes toys from children? I only have one character like that. Yeah. All right. Uh, favorite characters I'm going to give out so far. Uh. A vote for Stan McDonald, favorite character. A vote for Milk in Hell. <laughs> Milk in Hell, it's the ghost of Harvey Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I just put him in hell. I guess that's a working title. That's where he belongs. And two favorite characters were the Dirty Crooner. And overall, it's 4-0. This was Dave McDonald's week. Oh my gosh. 
Well, thank I you. should have probably had least favorite character because I know who mine is. I think that's when I start to lose it. But I will admit, I almost picked uh, Dennis Miller, uh, the non-obscure, and and Stan McDonough. I just found too sad. <laughs> just true. way too sad. There's a lot of confession. Uh, Lynn in Jersey, what did you like? Hey, uh, I actually have to say the incest tutorial was pretty freaking awesome. Incest, uh, that one got me a little nervous for being uh, too close. <laughs> Cyrus West uh, Hollywood. Yeah, Fez destroyed him. Favorite character was the uh, girl who Tiger Woods wouldn't fuck. Here's uh, Tom in Jersey. That was Mona. Yeah, I'd like to try out my new character. Yeah. It's Dave the sycophant laugher. You just got to give me a line, Ron. Um... What the fuck are you talking about? Wait, I'll, I'll get it. <laughs> okay. That is good. Da uh, Matt in Ohio. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, I'm just really glad Dave puts all the drops in there. Otherwise, we wouldn't know where to laugh. See ya. Here's uh, Don. Tom's River. Brother, it wasn't even a contest. Goes to Harvey Milk fucking ruled. Um, Matty, you're on Run of Fez. Can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. Who, why... Did somebody besides the two of them come up with the list of characters, or were these like... No, they did it. Even I don't know what they're doing. Right. They brought them all in. Why? Okay. I think next time maybe you could just go top three, because it was almost interminable. But I do have to say, Cooper Manning's getting unfairly passed over. Very nice job, Cooper Manning. And another vote for Dennis Miller's uh, inobscure references. Uh, let me say this. Cooper Manning had me too sad. I just <laughs> actually... I felt bad during Cooper Manning. <laughs> Because there's just too much truth there. <laughs> Eli, what do you have? Hey, I thought Fez actually won it on originality and writing. I thought Dave uh, ripped off his Billy Malcolm. That's Richard Cheese's act all the way. And Mario was just uh, Carmine the Banker. Uh, here is uh, Driver. You're on running Fez. Hey, Ronnie. Yeah. Hey, I think Fez has a little more talent there, but because Dave is such a sick fuck, his was too funny. Yeah, Dave's are just like... See, people can't ever compliment me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, Dave's were funnier than Fez is, but... But th there's something about Dave. There is a non-professionalism about him that becomes extra funny. It just... <laughs> well, no, the Harvey Milk thing, I just started laughing. Harvey Milk was Only, fucking no, amazing. The last thing is because I realized... What, what was his slogan? It wasn't, you know, it was, I'm trying to recruit you. Yeah, and I said, vote for me. <laughs> <laughs> and, that's, and that's, I'm here to recruit you. I realized as I was saying, this isn't the slogan. Oh, fuck. Um, here is uh, Chris. Ron, I'm going to have to say the winner is Fez for the pure reason that uh, it's got to be the first time in radio history a bear has ever done a bear. Ouch. Um... Look at the calls just coming in one after another. I can't keep up with them here. Exploding board. Incredible. And why? You guys did a little bit of work. <laughs> Once again, I'm proud of both of you. Now, Thank seven you. Seven more characters for tomorrow. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> really? It took me all week. Okay. Thank you. Sadly. I know. I, I know. By the way, sad. some of these characters are going to make it into... The 2010 lineup. 210. Oh, definitely. Some of these characters are coming back. I'm happy about that. Is this the last for the year? Or would you guys like to do this again on Tuesday? It's up to you. I'm going to let you guys decide here. Because you did 14. Well, I just don't think that they might be good any, on, on Tuesday. That's what I like. I like when they're really, really bad. <laughs> they might be I would love to do it again on Tuesday. I don't want to do it on Tuesday. But if that's the way it's going to do. If you just want to just say right now, Fez, you're the champ. <laughs> I'm going to let you win. Go ahead and say it. Um, no, I'm not going to say that. It's up to you. I just think we're, we're, we're going to water down the, the thing, but... Is that your new no. character, guy who can't admit defeat? <laughs> Dude, I want you to know this. Yeah. They're watered down already. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, people love the first week of all seven of all 14 characters. Now, they, they, now they're de de yes! demanding only three. Yes, that's why I tried <laughs> to tell you. So I think we should, ju we should, we should, we should, we should wait till after the break. That's my vote. Um, well, you know, you you actually had the opportunity to get out of this. All you got to do is say, no mas, and I'll let it go. I'll let it drop. Susie, you're running fast. Hi, boys. Yes. <laughs> um, Shirley Phelps Roper, Intolerant Weather Girl. I Where love that one because Fez at no attempt 
to do her voice. You know <laughs> Not what? Not one whatsoever, and that was cracking me up. That was such a disaster, that one, because I had a voice worked out, yeah. and then it would not come out of my mouth. For some reason, she turned into one of the girls from Grey Gardens. <laughs> And I have no idea why. That was never the voice I intended. It was really fucking great. Gail, you're on the Advantage Watley, in my opinion. I like Mona. I like the incestatorial. The Stanley McDonald was really uncomfortable. I have a feeling it might he might actually say that in a year or two. It, it, was, it was really funny that you really got to see their two different uh, errors. <laughs> Fez's, Fez's could have uh, come out on your show of shows. <laughs> they were very old references and voices. And Dave's were just these bizarre, why is he doing this fucking <laughs> pop culture references. Uh, all right, we'll take a break here. Uh, coming up next... It's time for the last of the Siren Series. The last of the Siren Series is another character showdown. Here's how it worked out. Fez has three of his classic characters. Dave has three of his classic characters. Uh, And, of course, then we have... Sid Rabinowitz, the old Jewish man who actually gives good tech advice. And, right. and is Jewish. And is Jewish. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had that from the name. All right. right the show. <laughs> Time to do the uh, big character showdown. Davy Max said he was thinking about taking a dive for you, Fez, as a Christmas present. Well, he doesn't have to do that. It's very sweet of you. Very sweet of both of you. Thank I would you, prefer Ron. that he didn't. Yeah, well, I'm um, thinking about it. That's the last two times I've let you call the twin costs. <laughs> both times you were correct. I'm going to give this one to Davey Mack. Oh. Davey? Yes. Call it when the toin is in the air doing the twin costs. What do you Heads. got? And you are now 0 for 3. Oh, boy. On the twin costs. It comes up tails. <laughs> Says Watley, what do you want to do? Keep it or give it away? This week, I am going to keep it. Oh, my God. I'm going to go first. Oh, fuck. I will take the first fuck. character. Says, before you can go first, I want to welcome back to the show from the ba- Brady Bunch, John Brady. John Brady is here. Hey, everyone. It's me, John Brady. Did you guys hear about Brittany Murphy? She's dead. I was supposed to go to Brittany Mur- Murphy's birthday party and wear my new giant afro wig and show everyone the new Jam Brady. But now I can't because she's dead. They're trying to figure out what happened, but I have some theories. Maybe she was allergic to flea powder. That's what happened to me. They thought I was allergic to our dog, Tiger, and we were going to have to get rid of him until the flea powder made me sneeze. And they realized that's what I was allergic to, not our dog. Or maybe it's just a bad ankle, like with our housekeeper, Alice. She had to miss the meat cutter's ball with her boyfriend, Sam the Butcher. Or maybe Brittany Murphy died because of our cousin, Oliver. You know, he's a real jinx. Or maybe she's just faking it to meet Joe Namath. One time, my brother Bobby told all his friends that he knew Joe Namath. So my sister Cindy wrote a letter to him saying Bobby was dying. Then he came to visit and throw passes to Bobby in our backyard. Or her heart problem could be brought on by smoking. Cindy and I caught our brother Greg smoking. He promised never to do it again. But then the cigarettes fell out of his jacket. But it turned out it wasn't his jacket. It belonged to Tommy Johnson, who was in Greg's band, The Banana Convention. She should have been doing more calisthenics, Brittany Murphy. Like when Alice's lookalike cousin, Sergeant Emma, stayed at our house. But all I know now is, all I ever hear is Brittany Murphy. Everything is Murphy, Murphy, Murphy. And I'm stuck in the middle. And being in the middle is like being invisible. Ah. Thank you, Jen. It's always nice to have somebody uh, famous uh, come by. And that's why I'm very excited to welcome Jimmy... From Pulp Fiction. Yeah, hi, I'm Jimmy for Jimmy's Pulp Instant Coffee. 
God damn, Jimmy. This is some serious going made shit. I don't need to tell me how good my coffee is, Julie, okay? I'm the one who buys it. I buy these beautifully roasted beans from the shores of Columbia to make the best fucking coffee for you, the coffee drinker. God damn, Jimmy. This is some serious going made shit. I don't need to tell me how shit. good my coffee is, Julie, okay? At Jimmy's Pulp Instant Coffee, we're going to give you expensive gourmet stuff because when I drink it, I want to taste it. God damn, Jimmy. This is some serious going made shit. I don't shit. need to tell me how good my coffee is, Julie, okay? With Jimmy's Pulp Instant Coffee, you'll never see a sign that says fake coffee bean storage. You know why? Because storing fake coffee beans ain't my fucking business, okay? God damn, Jimmy. This is some serious gourmet shit. I don't shit. need you to tell me how good my coffee is, Julie, okay? Don't you fucking realize, man? I don't sell the requisite amount of Jimmy's Pulp Instant Coffee. I'm going to go bankrupt, okay? No bailout, no loan. I'm going to go fucking bankrupt, okay? And I don't want to go fucking bankrupt. God damn, Jimmy. This is some serious gourmet shit. I don't shit. need to come and get my coffees, Julie, okay? Now, man, you know, fuck. I want to help you, but I don't want to lose my coffee business doing it, all right? Now go get Jimmy's Pulp Instant Coffee, okay? God damn, Jimmy. This is some serious gourmet shit. Oh, thank you, Jimmy. This is Jimmy from uh, Pulp Fiction. It's time for us to meet somebody new. And uh, it's Sheila Adams, the real estate agent for serial killers. Hello there, I'm Sheila Adams, real estate agent for Serial Killers, and I've got some lovely homes to show you today. Okay, I'm going to be honest up front. A lot of these homes, they smell. They smell like someone died in there, and that's because someone did. But you get used to it, right? I have a cat. You get used to it. The first place I want to show you is a place in Milwaukee. It's a nice apartment owned by a young man named Jeffrey Dahmer. Wait till you see the kitchen. There is so much room. If you want to dismember a body, you won't believe how much space there is. Plus, the appliances are like new and the refrigerator is huge there's room for a head most of a torso genitalia plenty of room now if you're looking to rent i have a beautiful home in chicago the gacy place again smell it smells like fat clown and dead people i hope that's not going to be a problem but there is so much crawl space plenty of crawl space enough to hold 26 bodies you heard me right 26 bodies you know, I just had something open up in Toledo, Ohio. A client of mine, Anthony Soule, black male, age 50, approximately 5 foot 10, won't be using his house for a while. It's available. But I believe they're still digging up bodies, so it probably won't be ready until spring. And if you love kids, I do have something available in Atlanta. My former client, Wayne Williams, loved this place. So conveniently located near schools. All right, I have to run. I'm showing a client a place in Yonkers, the Berkowitz home. I hear the neighbor's dog is possessed and tells people to kill. But if you like animals, it's a great buy. Let me leave you my card. Sheila Adams, real estate agent for serial killers. Thank you, Sheila. Uh, well, it's another one of uh, the old favorites from Mike and the Mad Dog. It's Mike Francesca. <laughs> I'm Mike Francesa, and this is Mike Dup. Mike Dup, Francesa, Mike. Redskins lose to the Giants. Giants, Redskins lose. I wonder what Dog's doing. Probably curled up and reading a book. He was cute when he was like that, right, Eddie? Eddie, cute? Eddie, Eddie, who was cute? A dog reading a book or that kid from YouTube who was high from the dentist? Eddie, remember that kid from the YouTube? Who was high from the Eddie? Remember? Eddie, it was, you don't remember? He was this kid and he was high from Novocaine or laughing gas or something, Eddie. I don't know all the ins and outs of the situation. Was having brunch with Coach Bill. That's Bill Parcells for you non connected sports hosts. And he was telling me, Ricky Williams, pleasant surprise this year. Williams, Ricky, surprise, tuna. Eddie, Eddie, do dentists even use laughing gas anymore? Eddie? Eddie, remember Steve Martin as the dentist from that giant killer plant movie? He used laughing gas in that movie, Eddie. Martin, Steve, gas, laughing. Do you think Rick Moranis was so small and he was so funny in that movie, right, Eddie? He reminded me of Dog. Eddie, was Dog ever on SCTV? Eddie, imagine if Dog was one of the McKenzie brothers. Speaking of hockey, Islanders are in a funk. Funk, Islanders in Eddie. Didn't they call themselves Islanders and Jaws? The the people on the island. They weren't hockey players, though, right, Eddie? Eddie, was Dog afraid of sharks? 
Email him if he was afraid of sharks. I don't remember. Get turn off the email dog. I would want to find out. Can't get into computers, Eddie. You know who never used a computer? Jimmy the Greek. He did pretty good for himself. Dog reminds me of that little kid from Where the Wild Things Are, Eddie. And James Gandolfini reminds me of me. It's like sometimes I love dog and sometimes I hated him. And then other times I wanted to eat him, and still other times I wanted to make a pile and churn off and have dog take a nap under our bellies. It's been mic'd up. I'm Francesca Mike. It's Mike Francesca, who I call Francesca for some fucking odd reason. Ah, so many old friends. So many old friends uh, coming by. That's why I'm so happy to welcome back to the show after so long, Andre the Giant. This is Andre the Giant, and I want to wish everybody a giant happy holiday. Not a little one, a giant one, because I am a giant. I'm seven foot four, 560 pounds from Grenoble, France. And I would like to go over my Christmas list. First of all, if you are buying me clothes, Go with a large. I'm going to need that. Why? Seven foot four, five hundred sixty pounds from Grenoble, France. Also, letting you know, I am afraid of snakes. Snakes scare me to death. So I'm putting together a list of things I do not want for Christmas. Number one, snakes. I explained that I am afraid of them, so a snake would make a horrible gift for Andre the Giant. Next, do not want a jump rope. Not that I'm against working it out, but the jump rope reminds me of a snake. One time, I saw two little girls playing with a jump rope, and I thought it was a snake. I headbutted the two girls and screamed, don't play with snakes. Something else I do not want for Christmas, a pasta maker. Pasta looks a whole lot like little tiny snakes. Who wants to eat snakes? Not me, but I do like to eat. I'm seven foot four, 560 pounds from Grenoble, France. But I'm not eating anything that looks like snakes. Other items not to buy for me? Shoe laces, appliances with long cords, and dog leashes. You know why, the snake thing. Thank you and enjoy the big holiday. I'm going to go outside and build a snowman now. And it's going to be seven foot four, five hundred sixty pounds from Grenoble Falls. There he goes, walking away. Andre the Giant. Footsteps really helps. Uh, somebody knew. Coming in, I hope everybody likes her. Uh, wait, that's the wrong side. No, this is a male coming in. It's Santa's <laughs> despondent elf, Eddie. <laughs> Hi, I'm Eddie. I'm so fucked up. Santa's <laughs> <Dad's> always <laughs> on my case. He doesn't know how fucking hard it is to make a Wii game. This fat fuck. It's not like 1932 where a wooden scooter will do. Now we gotta build fucking blackberries! I'm so fucked up! And Mrs. Claus thinks she can tell me what to do just cause she married into the family? Fuck you, bitch! I can't live on candy canes and gingerbread men anymore, you fat assholes! Have the Clauses ever heard of steak? Huh? Holy shit, this snow is killing me! Fuck! I haven't seen grass since 1978 when Rudolph got me high! Naughty your nice list, I'll tell you who's naughty, you fat fuck! A white guy in a beard who utilizes slave labor! Oh shit! Here he comes! I gotta go! See you later, you fucker! <laughs> There's, uh, Sam the Despondent Elf, Eddie. Now, here's the young lady I was talking about. It's Lupe, the horny cleaning lady who speaks in sex, sexy innuendo about cleaning. Hola, do you mind if I clean up in here? 
I do. Yes, you have something you need me to polish? I guess I could give it a good stitch on if you want. I could really use some help with my vacuum cleaner, too. It's not sucking so good. Maybe I should show it how. Or you could take care of my carpet for me. You know, get it clean, way deep down, por favor. Oh, and you got to be careful because it's very wet in here and I'm not talking about the floors. Maybe I should put up a caution sign or something. Then I got to work on the hand dryers in the men's room. If you want to join me in there, we can make sure everything is blowing properly. Have I showed you my mop yet? I call it Fernando. It's muy bueno with its big, long, thick, stiff handle. Let me tell you, it gets the job done on some lonely nights here. And if you like my mop, someday I'll show you my big brush too. What I like is the scrubbing bubbles. They feel all tingly and the scrubbing bubbles work so hard so I don't have to. I'm sure you are attracted to my smell. That's my extra strength pine saw. It's like walking in a beautiful pine forest. Of course, if you like walking in a pine forest, I guess I could give you a directions to one. Just head south, senor. Okay, I got the other rooms to clean and plenty of trash to take out. Although I know, I do know one can that needs plenty of filling if you like. I poppy. Adios. Uh, thank you, Lupe. Um, you know, some people get famous and then other people are famous because their brother is famous. So now let's talk to Frankie Savage, Randy Savage's gay brother. Oh, yeah. I'm Frankie Savage. Let's ring this fucker. I'm going to suck the shit out of Ravishing Rick Rude. If he puts one finger on me, I swear it. Hulk Hogan, your 24-inch pythons will have nothing on my five-and-a-half-inch fuckworm when I'm done with you. George the Animal Steel, you can stick that big green tongue in my asshole if you don't watch it, Buster. Roddy Piper, I'm gonna lift up your kilt and give you a blowjob if you're not careful, you Scottish fart fuck. Ricky Steamboat, if you don't watch it, I'm gonna karate chop your dick and jerk it off at the same time, man. Andre the Giant, I can't wait to put your gigantic cock in a sleeper hold and shove it up my ass. I'm Frankie Savage, Randy Savage's gay brother. You better watch out or I'll come on you, you fucks, you silly fuck. Thanks, Frankie. That was Frankie Savage, Randy Savage's gay brother. And you can tell by some of the things he was saying to the other wrestlers. <laughs> It's time to meet a superhero. It's Panda Man. Never fear, Panda Man. Oh, excuse me, it's here. I was once just an everyday mild-mannered zookeeper until one faithful night, oh, when I was bit by a radioactive panda. Unfortunately, I was able to push the thing over before I was injured more severely. Now I possess all the powers the abilities of a panda, including power napping. I sleep probably 10 to 12 hours a day, so if you need a crime solved, we have a very small window in which to operate. My greatest villain? Insomnia. He's vicious. He once kept me up for 45 minutes straight, and he's obviously not above torture. Let me tell you about some of my other panda powers. I communicate with pandas which could be a very powerful thing if they weren't all constantly sleeping. When I do communicate with them, usually all I get back is, not now I'm sleeping, or I'll help you come save the day, but just give me five more minutes. And like the pandas themselves, I do defecate in my sleep, which could also be used as a powerful weapon if I could just wake up and think to throw the panda turds at the supervillain. Now well, don't be intimidated, but when my panda powers activate, I grow to be over three feet tall. And I can eat about 30 pounds of bamboo a day, which is great. Because if a villain just happens to be hiding in a bamboo hut, I can eat my way to him in just a matter of weeks. Wait, oh, my panda sense is tingling. Somewhere, someone needs me sleeping for a long period of time. This is a job... Oh, my. For Panda Man. Thank you so much for yet another bear character. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to bear characters every week. Uh, it's, uh, again, somebody from a famous family, but not the most famous one. It's Alvi Corleone, the silly Corleone brother. <laughs> Hi, 
I'm Ali Corleone, the silly Corleone son. <laughs> Someone gave me this. No, <laughs> oh, sorry. Someone gave me this note and said, tell Michael not to let his Italian wife drive. There's a bomb in the car, but an episode of Caveman was on and I forgot to give it to him. Whoopsie! Sonny was so mad after Connie got beat up, I told him, clear your head and go for a drive. Yeah. oh <laughs> Yesterday, Pop was shot. I said, with what? Ice cream? He's gotten chubby. Shut her shits! I went into the bathroom and checked Dempsey's and removed all the bullets from the gun. Guess Michael will be coming out with just his dick in his hands after all! For fun, I got on Fredo's phone and pranked Johnny Ola, pretending I was Fredo. Hope he doesn't get in trouble for that. Luca Brazzi was putting on his bulletproof vest. I said, you know what would be funny? If your bulletproof vest was rendered useless by you getting stabbed in the hand. After Hyman Roth was shot, I told Michael, maybe he should have had a bigger piece of cake. Get it? Hey, Wolf, is that a horse's head in your bed? Or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> and they call Corleone signing off. I got a fart I can't refuse. I can't believe that didn't take place in Sammy's uh, Romanian. Uh, next, we're going to be talking with Gary, the grape juice... <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Some smoke in here. <coughs> it's a nature boy! Listen up! This is a nature boy! Woo! And if there's one thing I'm tired of hearing about, it's the so called athlete of the decade, Tiger Woods. He sleeps with 14 women, and that makes him the athlete of the decade? Tiger, you know what I call sleeping with 14 women? A slow Tuesday afternoon! Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! You're nothing, punk, and you're stealing headlines. You want to write about something? Write about me, the nature boy! Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! One weekend, I slept with every female cast member of the show, Dallas, and that includes Miss Ellie! I once ruined a purity ball by just walking in the place. The girls saw me walk that out and started throwing their rings back at their fathers and saying, Sit down, fat boy! That's what I do, Tiger. I have a ladies only line to ride Space Mountain, and that line is around the block and two miles long. Woo! 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 You think you're a big deal, Eldrick Tiger Woods? You're having sex with women and paying them off. You're an amateur at best. I sleep with women and they pay me and include a thank you note that says, Hey, Nate, thanks for letting me be a part of history. Woo! Woo I'm still getting residual checks from the time I fucked Joyce the Wit from Three's Company. Tiger? Go back to your wife, sweet Hanson. Take your golf club beating because you're in the deep end now. Leave the women to the professionals. I'm talking about the badass Rob Bennington. Hi. Woo! 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 The road dog Fesma Ray Watley. Woo! Go. Woo! Oh, and the nature boy. Woo! 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 Because you may not like it, Eldrick. But you will learn to what? Love, Love it. it! Why? Bottom line, because we are the best thing going today! Woo! 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 It's time for another classic character. Oh, okay. I was wrong what I said. Oh, <laughs> another classic. This is great news. It's Dave Leno. Hi, I'm Dave Leno. This is Headlines. This, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. This, this first headline is a picture of me at the beach with my son building a sandcastle in the shape of a giant cock. It's like, whoa, it's like, right, guys? It's like, they're called sandcastles, not sandcocks, right, man? You know? It's like, no, you know, what are we expecting? To suck it, right, Melon? This next headline is a poster of Peter North shooting cum all over a beautiful porn vixen, only I superimposed my head on the actress. It's like, hold on, the Ford, right, boy? It's like, there's a lot of cum, right? It's like, there's a lot of cum, Peter. Can you save some for later? Right, man? You know what I mean? 
It's like, you know, I really love cum, right? You know what I'm saying? I wish I could fuck the shit out of Joe Buck. This next headline is a photo of me propositioning a Mexican on San Rodeo Drive. It's like, hold the phone, right, guys? It's like, you know, who got this photo? <laughs> and boy, will I be blackmailed, right, man? You know what I'm saying? I really love dick, you know, right, guys? You know what I'm saying? It's not a headline of the Photoshop of me fucking Charlie Watts in the ass. It's like Rolling Stones. We're like fucking stones, right, man? You know what I'm saying? Right, guys? You know? Wish I could give Scott Wolf a hand job. Hey, I'm Dave Well. This is Headline. Now it is time for, uh, and let's go over to Fez for this, Sid Rabinowitz, the old Jewish man who actually gives good tech advice. This is Sid Rabinowitz with good tech advice. Why would I give you bad? What, am I some kind of smuck? Listen, I'm no Meshuggana. I know what I'm talking about. What kind of TV to buy? LCD or plasma? Plasma smasma. The flat screens on those things are vulnerable to burn in. After all our people have been through for over 5,000 years, the suffering. Do we really need to deal with plasma screen burn in too? Fed, fed, don't be a smedric. The LCD is lighter and uses less energy. But what do you care? LCD, JDL, PLO, it's all the same to you. You're not going to listen to me anyway. Next question, which is the better operating system? The new Windows 7 or the Mac Snow Leopard? Listen, Bubbler, the Snow Leopard has chutzpah. It's consistently beating Windows 7 in many general performance areas. Multitasking, boot time, shutdown time, iTunes encoding. It's all Mac. The Snow Leopard, it's like the Sandy Koufax of operating systems. It's a three-time Cy Young winner. Windows 7, Munich 72, 8 crazy nights out, what do they know? Listen to Sid, that Windows 7 is a pain in the tuchus, and I'm not going to stand around kvetching all day. People say, Sid, did you think you'd ever go with a Mac? I said, did you ever think Madonna would stick with Kabbalah? Did you think Barbara Streisand would do another one of those Fockers movies? Did you think Judd Hirsch could have a career with that face? No, but things happen. This is Sid Rabinowitz talking tech. Next time we'll talk about the Wii, and I'm talking about the one in my pants. Oy vey! I, that was Sid Rabinowitz, the old Jewish man who actually gives good tech advice. Or is this Sid Rabinowitz, the old Jewish man who actually gives good tech advice? Hello, Mr. Schindler. My name is Sid Rabinowitz, and boy, do I have a deal for you. How about an iPod? 3GS starting at $199. A beautiful piece of machinery, Mr. Schindler. Oy vey! Mr. Schindler, I know you're a man of fine taste, which is why you love MacBook Pro, a sleek and sophisticated piece of technology that allow you to email Nazi High Command on the go. Oy vey! Mr. Schindler, I know you like the alcohol, which is why you'll be enchanted by Cooper's state-of-the-art microbrewery kit, complete with modern technology to make your own fresh can of suds. Oy vey! Mr. Schindler, stop using that bulky phone on your desk already when you can communicate in fashion with the new BlackBerry Tor 9630. It has internet, Mr. Schindler, and the video games and the music and the this and the that. All there, just for you, Mr. Schindler. Oy vey! Mr. Schindler, stop watching those Nazi propaganda films on projectors when you can watch it on the new Sony Blu-ray player. With beautiful digitalized picture, you'll be saying, Octoon is this picture clear. Oy vey! I'm Sid Rabinowitz, and all this can be yours, Mr. Schindler, for just one job in your factory. Oy vey! Oy vey! And there it is. The boys are done here. The judges will put it together. Uh, Dave, what were your classic characters? Uh, Quinn Tarantino, um, Mike, Dave Leno, and Francesa. And Fez, what were your classics? Mine were Jam Brady, Andre the Giant, and the Nature Boy. All right, and then you each did Sid Rabinowitz. Why don't we do this? We'll take a break. I'll get the word in from the judges, and we will come back. With a winner. Strong job, fellas. Ron and Fez show the Siren uh, series on today. You 
Pero amigo, poco de usted. Pero amigo, pero la gente te lo iba. Pero la gente te lo iba. Pero la gente te lo iba. All right, let's go over the uh, winners here. No definitive on best character. First time that's ever happened. Oh, wow. wow. Everybody picked a, a different uh, favorite character. Albi Colleone, Nature Boy. Well, that came from the wrestling guy. <laughs> Mike, without the Mad Dog. Andre the Giant. And I had Jimmy from Pulp Fiction for my own favorite character. Because he really let Jules have it. <laughs> time and time again. <laughs> uh, favorite Jew. Let's go through this one at a time. Uh, Dave. Dave. Fez. Fez. And Fez. Oh. Three to two. Wow. Fez picks favorite Jew. I was the deciding vote there. I went with Fez Watley. Okay. Uh, overall winner. I'll just give you mine straight off. Fez Watley. Oh, jeez. Secret listener. Fez Watley. Nice. Really? really? Three people on the staff. Dave McDonald. Overall winner. Third time. Dave McDonald. That was close. But I have to be nicer to the staff. <laughs> in this in this situation, I want you both to know there are no winners. No, okay. Oh, None winners. You None. both were both. No one gets a medal? Absolutely horrible. Okay. And a lot of people okay. actually writing in that they like the Chinese Spanish cleaning woman. I don't know whether it was done on purpose, <laughs> but it was fucking hysterical. <laughs>